It's a nice day. I was doing some Earth Day stuff outside myself, cleaning up my yard. Yeah. I know. I just I just hustled back from soccer from Shane soccer practice. So. Steve, I dressed up the Earth Day slide so we can just present the Earth Day stuff from that slide. Okay, cool. I will do that. Thanks. Hey, Steve, this is Sierra. I also updated the election slides. Ah, okay. About updating. I can just control them. You can I'll assume I'll figure out when to move them. All right. <clears throat> okay. We'll give folks another couple of minutes to join. I might start the try to start the live on Facebook while we wait. Thank you everybody for joining who's joined us so far. Give us a minute or two. Well, this is weird. The Facebook Live is different than it used to be on Zoom. I don't know why. It's very weird. They've changed the settings on how to uh, Facebook Live from from Zoom, so I don't think we're going to be able to do that. So, give me one second to post on the website. All right. All right. Got a couple more people. Great. Thank you to everybody for joining us. Appreciate it. Uh, we will be. We will start in a minute or two. I know we're running a couple minutes late. So. Thank you all for joining us. Appreciate it. Um, I was trying to do the Facebook Live and it wasn't seeming to work as, as it used to. So 
I kind of abandoned that and I posted to have people join us so uh, on the Zoom. So it seems like they changed the settings, which is disappointing. Um, but thank you all for joining, appreciate it. Um, we will get started in a minute. Um, first thing we'll go through the So, all right, well, let's, let's start, no, no, no need to, well, hopefully folks will find us and join us. Um, thank you all for joining us. This is the April Groveton PTA meeting. Um, thank you, appreciate y'all joining. I'm Steve Van Tassel, I'm the PTA president. Uh, and usually the first thing we do is we sort of do a roll call. So if we were doing, if this was normal times, we'd be in the, We'd be in the library together, talking, chatting, and everything like that instead of on a Zoom. So uh, we'll try to keep some normalcy and have people introduce themselves. So uh, like I said, my name is Steve Antasso. I'm the PTA president. I have one son, Shane, who is in first grade in Spanish immersion. Uh, and so next is uh, we'll introduce is George Newberry, who is the PTA treasurer. Good evening. I'm George Newberry, treasurer, two children, second grade and kindergarten, 100% virtual. It's a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George. Uh, next, we have Sierra Selman. Hello, I am the PTA secretary, and I have one child at Groveton in first grade immersion, and then one uh, daycare uh, son at home as well. OK, great. Uh, next, we have Anna Bennett. Well, thanks for joining us, Anna. Hi, uh, yeah, Anna Bennett. I have three daughters at Grove and a fifth grader, fourth grader, and second grader. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Thanks for joining us. Uh, next, we have Peter Armenti. Thanks for joining, Peter. Hey, it's actually Megan, but Peter's oh. here too. So you can say, oh. <laughs> count us for two. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. All I see is a picture of Peter, which looks like it's from like high school, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's still one. He's still trying to figure out how that got on there. Um, <laughs> I did not put it there for the record. <laughs> anyway, uh, our son is Anthony. He's in second grade. Great. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Uh, appreciate it. Next, we have um, Mr. Chris Latham. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Latham. I'm one of the assistant principals at Groveton. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Latham. We appreciate you doing this. Uh, next, we have Camilla Thrash. Welcome, Camilla. Would you like to introduce yourself, Camilla? You can un unmute. My phone is acting up, sorry. <laughs> That's okay, thank you for joining. Yeah, I have a son uh, in the third grade. He's in the Spanish immersion class at Groveton. Great, well, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, next we have Ken Shuren. Thanks for joining us, Ken. Hey, how's everyone doing? My name is Ken Shuren. I got Roman, he's in the first grade in Miss Boo's class. And then we'll be rolling our second child, Quinn, uh, next year, and then we also have a third kid, but he's far off from from joining. A couple more years. Okay, excellent. Sounds like you'll be with Groveton for quite a while. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You guys are stuck with the Sharon boys. <laughs> but, excellent. Like, well, thank Adam, you. Oh, I'm sorry. It's like 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 the Adam Sandler movies. You're stuck with the Sharon boys. <laughs> excellent. Well, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, next, we have somebody who's joined. It's a Samsung phone. Sorry, I don't have a better description. Uh, my name is Maria Cruz. I have a second grader um, with uh, Mr. Santiago's class. His name is Fernando. Great. Well, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. <laughs> thank you for yes. having me. Oh, great. Thanks. Uh, next, we have uh, Mr. DeBonis. 
Hello, everyone. I am Rocco DeBonis. I am the Groptoon School Librarian. Thank you, Mr. DeBonis. And you will you'll find out, everybody will find out why he's here in a few minutes. Um, but thanks for joining us. Uh, next, we have somebody who joined from their phone number, which starts at 703. Um, if you want to say hi, introduce yourself. Hey, Steve, I think that's me, uh, Jim Swagger, principal. I'm having computer issues because I recently had my computer re-imaged and I'm having difficulty getting Zoom downloaded. <laughs> oh, the, the wonders of technology. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Swagger. No problem, and I'm working on it. I hopefully, hopefully I'll get this fixed in just a minute. <laughs> Great. Okay, well, thanks for joining us. Uh, next, we have somebody who logged in as DC. Sorry, this is Diane Creamer. Um, I've got Amy, fifth grader in Spanish immersion. Great. Thank you for joining us, Diane. We appreciate it. Uh, next, we have uh, Millicent uh, Kabbala. Did I get that right? Millicent, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. I'm here. Thank, thank you for joining us. Who, who, who do you have at Groveton? Edwin Cobra, he's here. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, and then we have Miss Casablanca joining us as well. Oh, she just sent a note on the chat saying, uh, Buenas noches, this is Miss Casablanca trying to fix my settings. So we'll let her go. She does, I think everybody probably knows Miss Casablanca by now. Um, okay, great. So um, we'll just get, we'll get started. That was the roll call. Thank you everybody for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, and I'm going to, we'll start the, we'll start the meeting right now. Um, um, so this is our seventh meeting of the school year. Uh, we did the roll call. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have them approve the March meeting minutes. So Sierra. All right, excellent. So I am going to share my screen if you wouldn't mind. Oh, let me unshare. Thank you. Thank you. All right. One second. All right. So the meeting minutes from last month are posted on the Groveton PTA website. And we rearranged the website a little bit so that we actually have different pages for the meetings. So our plan is to host uh, the different videos and then also the meeting minutes. So you can find the meeting minutes here. And from last month in March, had the treasurer's report with our current balance, president's report with uh, reminders about our fundraising options. We had excellent volunteers come forward with some summer camp presentations that are available to parents and um, caretakers. And then with that, we had some announcements um, and that was about it. So as long as everyone's good within minutes, we will proceed. Okay, thanks Sierra. Uh, does anybody have any objections to them? Okay, hearing none, they are approved. Thank you, Sierra. And thank you for posting those on the website. That's great. If people want to see what's happened in prior meetings, they can go back and do that. Thank, thank you for doing that. No problem. That's great. So, all right. So we'll go back. We've approved those meeting minutes. So next we're going to have George do the monthly treasurer's report. Do you need me to stop sharing the screen, George? Yes, please. Okay. There you go. All right, so this month we have $28,553.49 in the bank account. That includes the mad science program, you know, was already paid $365. Um, the teacher grant for uh, some request was actually approved last year, but it wasn't paid till like last uh, you know, school year, but we just got to it now. And then we paid state uh, and national dues for one member. Does include a check to deposit from toppers. I can't deposit on my phone, so I have to physically go into the bank. I haven't gotten that done yet. Um, any adjustments from Ms. Rodman's grant earlier to the shipping area? I haven't heard anything back from her on that, so we can probably 
close that out. So, you know, I'll, I'll contact her. And then um, a small reimbursement for, to me to, for paying Fairfax County dues. The way they work, you got to pay it with credit card or debit card. So it's easier if I pay it and then you write a check back. And there's one more 25 cents due to Fairfax County. And we still have outstanding um, Blizzard bingo expenses. Um, just waiting on the receipts from Steve for those gift cards and things like that. 45 members total. Now, um, getting to the budget, uh, we adjusted the, we're adjusting the budget. We need to present it to uh, the PTA membership, general membership for approval. Basically, we didn't have as much in the school programs um, line item. So adjusting that to account for mad science and Earth Day and any other spring stuff we want to do. Also, I consolidated the grade level programs. They could had been where there had been kind of money set aside for each kindergarten, first grade, second grade. But we didn't get any, you know, we weren't getting that money out. So we consolidated it down to just one line item for teacher grants. So hopefully that'll get a little more interest. And then finally, um, there was two line items, one for staff appreciation lunch and one, a separate one for gifts. But we can't give them food this year because of the pandemic. So we're, and you'll see it later, there will probably just be one larger staff appreciation type uh, gift thing, t-shirts. So in the budget, this is the budget going through the, what we adjusted back in February, I just have the next column over for April here. Um, it's pretty much the same, except for down here, you can see we had the individual grade funds. I consolidated them all and just rounded it to five grand. Um, and then down here, school programs increased it. So this still gives us, you know, room for, for spring programs, spring assemblies. And then, Mine, sorry, George, can I interrupt? Sure. Um, I think your 5,000 that you said was just for teacher grants went in the chalk for peace line. Oh yeah, you're right. We'll just change chalk for peace to. <laughs> okay. Oh, we had it right there. You're right. Good catch. See? Clerical Can't error. Do it all problem. by myself. Not a problem. Okay. <laughs> and then the staff appreciation gifts lunch combined. So that brings our total budget to these numbers, as you see. We're in the red because it's pandemic and we didn't, we made. PTA made a lot of money last year and didn't really spend it. So we still have plenty of money to spend um, and we need more help in spending it. So anybody that wants to volunteer to help coordinate with teachers or with the, with the school administration to spend it, figure out good ways to spend it to benefit us all the students, please contact us. And that concludes, uh, does anybody object to the changes in the budget? Please, if anybody objects, please let us know. If not, we will approve approve it. Okay, thank you, George. Appreciate that presentation. Um, thank you for your work on the budget. We appreciate it greatly. Um, hey Steve, can I jump in for a, a budget thing just real quick? Sure, Mr. Swagger, go ahead. Um, so uh, you and I, we spoke about the uh, a couple of budget items possibly moving forward and um, we have asked for um, uh, estimates from the county on both of them, and we're expecting uh, results back on those um, by the end of the week. So do you want to share what we talked about? Um, probably we'll, let's wait till um, till next month. Um, okay. Just to, just to make sure that it comes in okay. <laughs> yes, but we, we do have the, those are in progress, and we're waiting for estimates from the county. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. That'll give people something to tune into for next month. There you go. Same bad time, same bad channel, right? Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Appreciate that, Mr. Swagger. Uh, okay. So uh, now we're going to. All right. Well, thank you very much, George. Uh, now we'll go to uh, sort of my president's report. Uh, whoops. Yeah. So I can do that right. Uh, just wanted to highlight a couple of things that we did recent PTA activities. Uh, we had the mad, we sponsored, we paid for the mad science assembly last Friday and uh, my son enjoyed it a lot. I know other people I heard, I hope everybody's kids were able to join and um, enjoyed themselves. Um, seemed like it was very nice. Uh, Mr. Swagger, do you have any feedback on that? 
Uh, yes, I talked to I've I talked to maybe um, maybe fifty or so kids, and everybody from uh, the pre K kids all the way through sixth grade enjoyed it. Uh, the teachers very much enjoyed it because it was a nice break in their day. Um, uh, but the, it, it was very fun and, um, everybody, all the kids thought that the presenter was very funny. He, um, he did some experiments and, you know, he was kind of jokey and did some funny things, but also, um, some good science, uh, information. So yeah, everybody, uh, everybody enjoyed it. Uh, we did hear that there was one class that, uh, didn't get to participate. So, um, we're working on um, possibly getting them to be able to do the uh, the recording. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. Sorry that that class couldn't make it, but um, we'll see if we can get it out to them somehow. Okay, uh, the next thing is that uh, all the Blizzard Bingo prizes have been distributed. We'll save one that we don't still have an address to send it to the person, but um all a lot of amazon packages were sent a lot of gift cards were sent out people have been, people have got them so congratulations to all the winners uh and uh, then we, did somebody have something nope okay uh then we had two teacher projects and grants funded uh we had miss rodman as we had we had done before um she bought some she bought some trikes for the for the gym for a pe uh, and then we had Ms. Walker, who uh, had requested uh, last year, requested funding to take some Spanish classes. And so uh, that was approved by the board last year. And we, we reimbursed, she took the classes or is taking them now and we reimbursed her for those. So um, she seemed very excited about that. So that's great news. Um, so the next thing we have, uh, we have future PTA activities, which is very exciting. We have the Earth Day School Grounds Cleanup, which is on, this is on the 24th, which is this Saturday. George will talk more about that in a moment. Uh, we have the Staff Appreciation Gift, which uh, Mr. Swagger has gotten um, some, has gotten pricing to do some t-shirts. Uh, and uh, we have money in the budget for them. And so uh, oh, yeah, we should be able to go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully staff will be appreciative of that. Sorry, we can't do the normal lunch, but that's... Oh seems to be forbidden right at this point, which is understandable. Um, we have our Spirit Day fundraiser at El Paso coming up on the 4th of May. Uh, thank you to Julie Margolis, who I don't think is on here, but thank you, Julie, uh, for organizing that. We really appreciate it. And that sounds like that'll probably be a lot of fun. Uh, and then we're going to start working yeah. again on the school crossing guard issue. Uh, because we don't have one, and we for Harrison for Harrison Street, and we really should, and um, we need to get gonna be talking some pressure about on testing, so some I to hear officials and people what? to. I I get well, we just said go to testing. Need, we do need. So, um, I think we do need that. Right I mean, now, he's just talking. We have an open mic. Would you mind yeah. muting? Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah, so. Um, so I know people who have been at the school for a while have um, worked on this issue for many years. I know Mr. Swagger has, and we're gonna keep working on it till we get somebody there. Um, so, and then I wanted to ask if anybody else had any ideas for future activities, whether it's in the coming months over the summer or next school year, um, let us know now, or you can send note, you can send a note or post it on Facebook. We're happy to do more if we can. Okay. Uh, so uh, next week, George is going to do talk about the Earth Day school grounds cleanup. Yep. So this Saturday from 10 to noon, we're going to clean up the school grounds. Pretty simple. And we're not going to make it complicated. We're going to show up with trash bags and gloves. And we might bring a little trailer so we can halt, you know, if we have to haul the bags along, you know, over to the trap, the dumpster, but basically we're going to pick up trash and put it in the dumpster. And if people bring landscaping tools, whether it's hand tools, right, I should start my video. Whether they bring hand tools or like power tools, then they can, we can clean up, you know, sidewalks, or we can uh, fix garden beds up, all sorts of things. So we'll see how many people we get and we'll see uh you know what we can do in the time we have i think there's enough trash probably to pick up so far i think we have 15 16 people signed up or total four or five families 
and uh, you know that should be enough for basic grounds cleanup. But the more more out there, the more merrier. Uh, it's a good time just to we can socially distance and, and, and clean up the school. There will be toppers pizza afterwards. Uh, Julie Margolis is organizing that, and we'll also have water and snacks for you know during the actual event because kids aren't going to do anything unless they have snacks. <laughs> That's the reality. Is it a rain or shine event? It is. I'm going to do a rain or shine. I don't feel like rescheduling it for another day. So I, I, I noticed the last time I looked at it was 50% rain on Saturday. I haven't looked yet today. Um, the two hours, bring a rain jacket. Uh, I'll be out there in the rain. So. Any questions? Thank you, George. Um, and I know the Sign Up Genius has been posted on the Facebook page, and it's also available on the website, which is www.gropedinpta.org. So please sign up if you're interested. We'd love to have uh, folks join us. Thank you. Join George. Right. Thank, thank you for doing this, George. Yeah, and I'll put it in the chat right now. Thank you. That would be great. Okay. Uh, our next the bit of business is that we have some elections coming up for the PTA. We need to have an elections nominating committee. So um, I'll let Sierra uh, take over and talk about that. All right, thanks, Steve. Um, so I have a few slides that just go over um, some of the information about the election committee and the process, and then um, a breakdown of each of the PTA officer roles so people can understand what's expected. Um, so first thing is to get started with the election season. Um, we need to create a nominating committee and those individuals will be elected by you all on the PTA. And our goal is to um, have an election by May of this year. And then uh, what we're trying to do tonight is find out if anyone is interested in volunteering to be part of that election committee. So Steve, can you go to the next slide? All right, so the logistics of the nominating committee are that uh, it has to be three PTA members um, and it's going to be to facilitate the election of four PTA officer positions. Right now, we only have three filled, but there are actually four, the president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. And then the goal of the committee is to reach out to the current PTA members, identify those people that are eligible and interested, and then to present it to the PTA at large for um, voting to take place. And the way that voting takes place is that if we have more than one person for a position, we will actually have ballots. But if we only have one person for a role, it will just be election by voice. And luckily, um, Anna was actually on the committee last year. Um, Anna, am I missing anything important from anything that goes on with the committee? Uh, no, no, you just kind of scratch your head and scour your brain for people that might be interested and then ask and ask and ask until someone says yes. Perfect. <laughs> um, and so um, first I just wanted to go over each of the PTA roles so people understand um, kind of what's expected. So um, the terms are that an officer will serve for one full um, count, um, year um, that they will take that position starting June of the voting year. And then uh, there are terms and the fact of you only have it for one year, you cannot serve more than two consecutive terms, and then you can't exceed four years in the same office. So those are just some of the restrictions as we move forward. And then next slide goes over into the expectations. So the president presides over all the PTA meetings, uh, coordinates the officers, the different committees and fundraisers um, that stand up. They are not responsible for executing these, but oversee the actions and um, activities that the committees and board members are doing. Um, additionally, they have to submit all the PTA officer information to the Virginia PTA office, and then any additional duties as assigned. The vice president is essentially acting as the aide as the president, um, they'll step in if the president can't be there for an activity or an event and then perform any additional delegated duties. And then the secretary um, records all the meeting minutes to make sure that, that they're posted, um, has the copy of the PTA bylaws, maintains the membership list, and then other duties as assigned. For instance, I'm managing the website right now. And then the final one that has a lot of responsibilities <laughs> is the treasurer. And so, 
Treasurer is responsible for all the PTA funds, um, keeping track of the budgets, any sort of expenditures and reimbursements. They keep track of the checking account in addition to the president, um, and then keep track of the financial statements and have their um, report each session and then go through our audits and taxes and make sure that we're uh, paying all of our dues. So with all that said, um, if anyone is interested, would you please say your name and then uh, to be part of the election committee? And then hopefully if we can get three people, um, we can get started on the election process. So if you're interested, raise a hand, say yes, this will be fun. <laughs> If you don't want to say if you don't want to say it out loud, um, as I said, before, interested in being part of the committee, you can just reach out to Sierra at Groveton PTA Secretary at gmail.com as well. So if you don't want to announce if you don't want to announce your intentions over, during the meeting, that is fine. We understand. So thank you for that presentation, Sierra. That's very good, uh, very helpful, useful. Uh, so next we're going to go. Um, we have a a presentation on testing. Mr. Latham is going to be doing that. I will stop sharing my screen so that he can share. So he can share his. Uh, whenever you're ready, Mr. Latham. Thank you for joining us in doing this. Perfect. Thank you. I'm happy to do it. Let's see. All right. Is everyone able to see? Yes, thank you. Perfect, perfect. So uh, first we wanna provide kind of an overview of the assessments that are going on this spring um, because there's quite a bit uh, just like there always is. And, and obviously there are some uh, additional measures and, and kind of complications with, with the way things are this year. So um, here's a list of the assessments that are going on uh, either right now at Groveton or coming up very soon at Groveton. Um, our WIDA access testing, that's for English learners, has been going on since about January. Uh, that includes testing students that are in person in, grade, in grades K through six. That also includes appointments um, for any students who are virtual and want to come in to participate in testing. So that's uh, an added uh, bonus that we get this year is to make all of these testing appointments for Mondays uh, to, to do the testing. Um, Naglieri testing, this NNAT3 testing, uh, was just completed. That's one of the tests we use for advanced academics in uh, Fairfax County. And we just completed that this uh, Monday with some makeups for our first graders. So that will be happening again um, next spring, but that just we, that was just completed um, this, this uh, past Monday. And then the universal screener in the spring window is going to be coming um, next week. That's an assessment that the students take again on the computer. Um, there will be participation in the classrooms. There will be participation for students who are virtual. Uh, and that uh, assessment gives us uh, data on their reading uh, level in progress and their math level in progress uh, that we're able to use when we're um, when teachers are planning, when they're thinking about what kids need, what kind of services, things like that. Uh, then we're moving on to Virginia Kindergarten Readiness Program, which uh, we call VKRP, which is just for kindergarten and is a, a math screening assessment just for kindergartners um, that their teachers will be talking to you more about. We're, we're training teachers for that next week, and that'll be rolling out very soon. Um, and then I'm going to spend the bulk of the time really talking about SOLs um, assessments, but wanted to give this uh, kind of overview first. And then there is a remote uh, option for what that goes along with the SOLs this year. So I'll talk a little bit through that because it is different than in years past and it's a little bit complicated. So I see, I think somebody has a question. Do we want to stop now or do we want to wait till the end? I'm happy to do either way. Whatever you want to do, Mr. Latham, your presentation. Sure, sure, sure. I can, um, is it Ken? Yeah. Do you want to go, go ahead and jump in? Thank you. Uh, quick question regarding the NAT testing for the first graders. Sure. Did we, did the parents have to sign up for that or is that given to every first grader? So that's given to every first grader. The 
difference this year is that if students were virtual, the we had to set up testing appointments to do that in person. Um, it's not required, so we didn't have 100% obviously participation this year, um, but otherwise that's given to every student. We sent out uh, in March a notice of testing um, letter so that everybody knows when it's coming and what it's gonna be. And then if students were in person, like they normally would be, that, that ran pretty similarly to how it does every year. And then if we had to make appointments, the office uh, staff has been awesome at helping us schedule appointments and making phone calls and follow-ups and, and all of that. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for the detailed information. Appreciate it. Absolutely. No problem. Thank you. So uh, like I said, I'm going to jump a little bit um, deeper into SOL testing or uh, what they're calling now the VRSPT, the remote option for this year. So there are a couple of options this, this year that parents have. The first important option to understand is that parents uh, always have and have the option this year of refusing testing. So that includes um, refusal of any SOL tests. That also includes uh, refusal of tests based on COVID for students that are 100% virtual. So it's our responsibility to offer in-person testing appointments for anybody who wants to take advantage of that who is fully virtual still. And it is a parent's right to refuse to want to come into the building based on their concerns that are most likely keeping them virtual. Um, so that's sort of option number one. And these options, if um, anybody's been contacted by the office staff who has virtual students, these options were, were laid out by them as well. There's uh, a virtual option for testing this year, which is available to the fully virtual students only. It's not a full SOL test. Um, SOLs are secure and can only be given in uh, school, in the controlled testing environment. But this is an assessment that will give parents a sense of how students are doing in whatever subjects they take this test for. So this is available for math. It is available for uh, reading. It's also available for, for science in fifth grade, only to students who are fully virtual. So that's another, a second option that, that uh, parents were presented with. And then the third option is in-person appointments for testing. So that will be in the schedule that I'll show in a little while and that Ms. Casablanca sent out um, a, a couple of times now, uh, starting a few weeks ago, about uh, Monday testing appointments for students who are virtual that would like to come into the building to take the official SOL tests. Um, so those are our, our real big, you know, our big three options this year. And here is when the appointments are happening. So in-person testing appointments. And like I said, the office staff is reaching out about these, uh, making phone calls, making follow-ups. Monday, May the 17th, that should say three through six reading, not K, K through six reading. And three through six math, not K through six math. But so Monday the 17th is, uh, will be reading SOL testing for our virtual students who are coming in for appointments. Monday the 24th, um, will be math testing for our virtual students who are coming in for appointments. And then Tuesday, June the 1st, will be our science um, appointments for students who are virtual. And that's only for fifth grade. There's only a science test in fifth grade. So that's a, a much smaller number of students. Okay. And then these are the calendar dates for reading. Again, that should say three through six and not K through six. These are the calendar dates for our students who are in person. Um, we have to, because we have some students in the building Tuesdays and Wednesdays only, and some who are here Thursdays and Fridays only, we're doing two days of testing for each subject to accommodate uh, both groups, if that, if that makes sense. So on the 19th, we'll be doing the Tuesday, Wednesday group. For reading on the 21st, we'll be doing the Thursday, Friday group, and then the same format for math on the 26th and the 28th of May. And then, the same thing for, again, fifth grade science. That's a much smaller group because it just pertains to fifth grade, but June 2nd and June 4th. Um, our goal with the calendar for testing this year is to preserve as much of the instructional time that we have left in the school year um, because we know every minute <laughs> that we have that teachers can be with the kids and in front of the kids and not proctoring assessments it is going to be really valuable. So that is our goal. Um, you know, with this testing calendar this year. Okay. And then uh, the last sort of hot topic, and, and this has been, um, I know something that a lot of parents were asking about because of all the options, 
but uh, for students who are in person as well as students who come in for in-person appointments, all of the SOL testing accommodations that we normally provide for students with IEPs, for our English learners, for, for those who qualify um, are still available. One bonus is that because of the way um, classes are filled this year because of social distancing and, and the numbers, all of the classrooms currently are technically small groups. So a lot of times during testing, we break uh, full classrooms up of students of, of 20 or 25 or more into smaller groups for testing because that's something students require. Uh, right now, all the classrooms technically are small groups. So we might have some even smaller groups if students need that, but for the most part, they're already in pretty small groups um, as they're gonna be testing. Uh, there are breaks built into the day. So students will get breaks uh, during the test, they'll be able to get water and, and take breaks from the testing as, as needed. Some students have this built in um, as an accommodation and, and, and some students just need this. This is something that applies to all students. Obviously they need breaks during testing. Um, and then there are additional specific accommodations by students, but all of the accommodations that they normally would be allowed uh, are still happening and allowed this year. So we'll, we'll be accommodating all of those. And if any parents have specific questions, um, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to Ms. Casablanca, or you can reach out to your child's um, you know, case manager uh, about specific questions about what their accommodations might be and what those are gonna look like um, for them specifically this year. And then last, I'm happy just to answer questions. Um, if we have a couple minutes right now and, um, if not, like I said, if you have very student specific questions specific to your child, feel free to reach out and um, we can answer some very specific questions too offline. Thank you, Mr. Latham. I know Ms. Casablanca posted that um, the testing calendar will be shared again in this week's newsletter, just in case people didn't get, get it here or haven't seen it before. And Thank that one's a very nice uh, visual reminder. You could print it out, you could put it on the fridge. <laughs> it's an easy way to keep track. Okay, if anybody has any questions, um, feel free. Mr. Latham's here. Uh, or if you, you want, you can ask him later. As he said, you can reach out to him if you just want to ask it personally. This is Camilla Fresh. I do have one question. You said that the in, going into the school to do the SOL counts more than the um, virtual. I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? Going into the school to do the SOL, is, is, it's, is it better than doing virtual? I don't think it's better or worse. Um, technically, the alternate assessment that I talked about um, is not an SOL test just because SOLs can only happen within the building in that controlled testing environment. So it will be, it's a very similarly constructed test. Um, it's based on all the same standards. It's just not technically an SOL test. Thank you. Sure. We had another. We had another question posted in the chat, which is, "What's the primary difference between the virtual and the in-person test?" From um, the Armenti family. Sure. So the the primary difference, like I said, is just the test security. Um, the they're not able to offer SOL testing over the secure platform to students who are at home and still maintain the test security. So as far as I understand it. Uh, from doing the training, the tests will be very, very similar. Uh, it's like I said, built on the same standards. It, it has the same blueprint of questions. It's just not using the same uh, format, not necessarily the same question types. There are question items on the SOLs where kids have to um, drag and drop their answers. They have to fill in answers. And I think those are um, components that they're trying to protect. That's the part of their test security. Uh, so I, I think those will not all be components of the virtual um, alternative. And then we also have a question on what are SOL tests used for? Sure. So typically SOL tests are um, used by the school. They're used by us for, for data purposes. So we're able to look at what um, students know and what they need to learn still as we go into the following year. They're typically in other years used for state accreditation purposes, but that's not true this year. So the, the SOL test this year will not count towards state accreditation. 
um, but they will be used by schools to sort of track student learning and, and for us to make plans going into next year um, to really be thinking about what students learn this year uh, and where we need to spend our time next year. Okay. Hey, Chris, if I could just uh, share two yeah. quick things. Um, first, I just wanna say to everybody who's watching this presentation tonight, if you looked at all that uh, testing that Chris shared and thought, man, this seems like a lot of testing, we completely agree. None of, none of this is Groveton specific. It's e all either from the state or the county, and it is a ton of work. Um, the, uh, Chris and, and Fran spend hours every day working on testing, uh, basically from January until the end of the year. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to share is, you know, some people were asking me about SOL testing this year, knowing that I have two children in elementary school. Um, and I, I'm happy to share that I opted my two children out of the SOL, my elementary students out of the SOL this year. Uh, my middle school and high school students, um, they, they have to take theirs as verified credits. So the SOLs count a little differently in middle and high school. But for elementary this year, I just didn't feel like this was a good a good year for them to be assessed in this way. So, and I think Ms. Casablanca just added in the chat that she did as well. Mr. DeBonis uh, said the same thing. Thank you for sharing all that. We appreciate it. Was there any were with, there any other questions from anyone or with people with people uh, opting out of the SOL testing is that going to be reassessed and you know say you know my, my, the second graders or next year or that, how does that work is there going to be extra kind of training opportunities or so my my best guess is that SOL testing and things next year will go sort of back to normal um, as, as things go more back to normal. So there will be, um, you know, it will, it will count back for accreditation. We haven't heard anything quite about that yet. I think there's still some decisions at the state level they have to make and, and roll them down to us. But my guess is as things return to normal, that will be one of the things that also returns back to normal. And would it hurt, would it hurt the kids if they aren't assessed as high as, as normal based on, you know, in personal, I mean, based on, you know, computer learning, et cetera? Or that's, yeah, that's a good question. It, it never hurts the students. Um, like I said, it does count for school accreditation. We use it primarily as data to decide um, what students need. Sometimes that's across uh, the whole school or across a grade level where we see something that kids need. And sometimes it's, in, it's individualized to say um, what students still need to learn, what they need support in and things like that. But it never, it doesn't at the elementary school level, it doesn't count against them. There's no, like Mr. Swagger said, verified credits that they're, they're trying to go for, um, you know, for graduation and, and things like that. So it doesn't, it never counts against uh, students. Okay. So, so is it beneficial to the school to, to say, you know, whatever, based on computer learning that the, 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 the the, the scores were lower, so it's going to, you know, help funding or something else, or it has no kind of. This, this year, it won't count uh, against accreditation or, or any of those things, so there won't be any penalties. Um, for us, uh, typically, there is also a, an attendance requirement that we have to fulfill for the state, so we don't have too many, um, typically, refusals uh, of testing, so that is um, important in years past, but that's different this year than it is in, in other typical years. No, thank you so much. Great info. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. Um, yeah, so the process for opting out uh, is to, like Ms. Casablanca just said, you have to send us an email. We need something in writing um, that says you're refusing and for what specific tests, because it is possible to refuse um, it kind of on a menu. So you could refuse to for them to take a reading test, but you could want them to take the math test. So we just need some very specific information in writing. Um, and in emails is probably the easiest way to do it right now. And then there's a question about um, what type of remediation will be offered going forward um, for kids who are struggling. 
I, I think there will be all levels of, of things available. I, I think next year across the county and, and across the country, there's going to be a lot of assessing early on to see what kids know and, and what they need. Uh, some of that's going to start in the classroom. And then I think we have some ideas for next year about some supplemental things that are going to help kids um, as they need different levels of support. So um, if you're worried about something or if you have any specific concerns about your student, please, I mean, feel free to reach out and we can certainly talk about, um, you know, what they might need and, and how to get it to them. Okay, well, thank you so much, Ms. Olatham. We really appreciate the presentation and answering all of, answering everybody's questions too. That was very nice of you to do. Absolutely, happy. we're happy to do it. Yes, well, thank you very much. Uh, so next we're gonna have, uh, we've got Mr. DeBonis here. And the reason why he's here is to talk about the book fair. He wanted to, he wanted to do a little presentation on that. So we, were, we are happy to have him. So uh, Mr. DeBonis, when you're ready, go right ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to try sharing my screen. Oh, this is easier than I thought it would be. I'm used to Blackboard, so give me one second to. And can you all see that? Yes, we can. Thank you. Excellent. OK, so um, thank you for having me tonight. Um, I'm here for a couple of reasons. The number one reason is um, help getting information out about the book fair. This is a very unusual year, as we all are aware. Uh, when we've done the book fair in the past, uh, I'm there with the kids. Uh, I could meet people face to face. We can send home flyers. This year is gonna look very different as everything this year is looking very different. Um, so the first thing I'd wanna do tonight is just share information with you, the PTA, so that you all know what's happening. You can share information with other parents um and 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 get the word out there i'm trying to reach as many different groups in the school as possible um, and just kind of lay out how this is going to work this year because it is so different so our fair is going to be 100 percent virtual um, students will still have the opportunity to, to um, see and buy um, all the books that they would normally would but it is all going to be through the scholastic website um, the dates of our fair will be May 3rd through the 16th, so it's about two weeks away. Um, you will be able to order your books through the Groveton homepage. Um, I've established a web page just for Groveton. That link is right here. Uh, let me put, I'll put the, I'll put that link in the chat box for anybody who wants to copy it and save it. Give me one second to do that. There it is. And um, all the ordering will go directly through this particular link. And you'll notice our name is right there at the end. Um, and that's gonna be really important because when you buy books, Scholastic donates 25% of that purchase towards me buying more books for our library at school. Um, so you get your books, but you also see 25% of that purchase come back to our school. And that's especially important for students who can't afford to buy books on their own. They're still going to have an opportunity to be exposed to all these books through the fair um, when I purchase books um, with the proceeds from our fair. Um, let's see. Uh, when you purchase books online, they're going to be shipped directly to your home. Um, that shipment is free for orders more than $25. Obviously, there'll be a shipping fee for less than that. Uh, there's some funky wording here, which is straight from Scholastic. So the shipping is free when the order is $25 or more in books only. Um, so for anyone who's been to the book fair before, uh, you'll know that they don't only sell books. Uh, <laughs> in fact, a lot of the students' favorite stuff is not books. Um, they sell Legos, they sell toys, they sell uh, little gadgets. Um, every parent has to make their own decision about which, <laughs> what they want to, uh, what they want their children to purchase from the school fair. But that's what that wording is about. So um, there might be special shipping fees if you buy things other than books. I am not promoting one or the other, of course. Um, 
we are currently doing a book fair preview in library class. So I see all students in every grade level, every class, um, every other week um, so for about a half an hour. So I've already started with them previewing the book fair, uh, showing them the books that will be there, talking to them about what I'm talking to you about, how they'll go about ordering it. Now, my fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, my third graders can probably figure a lot of this out on their own. Our kindergartners, our first graders, our second graders are gonna need some help. Um, so feel free when your student comes in for library to sit in with them and, uh, and see what the process looks like, see what the books look like and uh, be prepared to help them out, uh, you know, ordering those books because it could, it is, it, it could be very confusing. Um, we also have a digital book flyer. So in the past, We've uh, sent home these little uh, flyers that are on really cheap newsprint. <laughs> this year, there's a digital one. I'll put the link to that into the chat box also. That book flyer has certain books that are showcased. These tend to be the new books that are exclusively offered through Scholastic, but they're not all the books that we'll find at the book fair. Um, the other thing I will say is that when digital book fly, when when the flyers have been passed out in the past, um, you see the name of the book, you see the title of the book, um, you see an image of the cover, you see the price. We are elementary. Um, one of the more challenging things for me as a school librarian is that I am doing my best to serve students from pre-K through six as a wide age range. That's a wide uh, range of interests and uh, social emotional uh, uh, capabilities also. So with the flyer, um, I'm putting it out there and I'm also saying to parents, read it with your kids. There are some books, some scary books for the older kids that you probably don't want your kindergartners looking at the previews for it. And because it's a digital, some of those are digital previews, they're actual videos, not just the cover of the book. Um, I, I wouldn't let my, you know, kindergartner or first grader look at some of those previews. So read it with your students, um, preview it with your students and um, talk to, you know, help them make uh, age appropriate choices and the appropriate choice for your household uh, as far as those books go. Um, so that's the digital book flyer. And there is one very important thing. Let me find my mouse. It's flying all over the place. There's one very important thing that's gonna be different um, about this fair. In the past, when we do the fair, it's one week long, it's in the library. You come to the library, you buy your book. Um, I, I'm standing behind the register with my um, awesome assistant, Ms. Corral, and we sell it to you and you walk home with your book. This year, it's different. Um, we have this two week window to buy the books um, and it's very important that if you buy books uh, and you share this information with other parents too, that you buy it through our link right here, that you don't go to Scholastic and buy the books because then you'll just be buying books um, and Scholastic will profit from that, but our school won't. So the number one thing you wanna do is make sure you use our link and also that you do it between May 3rd and May 16th. So if you order your books through between May 3rd and 16th, we get 25% of those proceeds to buy more books for the library. If you do it after the 16th, we only get 2%. So you wanna make sure that you, make, you place those orders between the 3rd and the 16th. And the last thing that you wanna do is make sure that you're using that link that I put in the chat box. If you order directly from Scholastic, not through the Groveton link that I created, we get 0% of those proceeds. So it's great. I love for kids to get books in their hands. Um, that's, that's why I do this job. But I would like to get even more books in their hands and make sure that everybody uh, that Groveton is getting a portion of those sales um, for our library. Um, what was so the percentage that, during the two weeks? During the two weeks, it's 25%. Okay. Which um, is, is sizable in our, in our past fairs. I've bought hundreds and hundreds of books with the proceeds from our book fair. It, it's really filled a lot of our shelves. So this is a huge, huge, huge 
fundraiser, uh, fundraiser for our library. Um, and yes, you can send the link to grandparents. Thank you, George. Very good. That's our treasurer, right? Um, <laughs> you can send the links out far and wide. It doesn't have to be just us. Um, you can share that link with other people who might want to buy books for your student. Um, and then my last point, speaking of fundraising, and I, I must have great timing because I heard our treasurer say that you all needed some more places to spend money. Um, and here's one. <laughs> so if you follow that link, the first thing you'll see is that you can open an e-wallet. And basically that is an online um, credit system for Scholastic where you enter either um, a credit card or a check number and you can set um, a spending limit for your child. But we could also do it as groups. Um, sometimes teachers will donate money and they'll open up an e-wallet and then um, either they uh, buy books for students that they know can't afford to buy books on their own, or they turn that over to me and my assistant and we, we purchase books for students we know uh, would like to have books, but you know, possibly can't afford them. Um, so it would be wonderful uh, if the PTA were willing to open up an e-wallet account like that. Um, and then uh, we could work, I could work with whoever uh, um, uh, would represent the group on how you want to structure that, whether the PTA wants to um, set certain standards for donating that money, um, leave it to the discretion of your librarian to um, buy, purchase books for students, uh, maybe you want to just purchase books directly for the library. Um, all of those things are a possibility, but it's actually that is one um, one silver lining <laughs> to our book fair this year is that I think that would be a very easy way for the BTA to participate um, and and donate to the book fair. Um, and again, if we buy books for students, those books that you buy for students in need, twenty five percent of that still goes towards our school um, overall, and we get more books coming into the library. Um, so it's it's a bit of a twofer um, for uh, any kind of uh, e-wallet e account that you all uh, decide to create. So um, if anybody has questions, I wish I had a really cool question slide like Chris did. It's one thing I didn't think of, but if anyone has questions, I'm willing to answer them. Well, thank you, Mr. DeBonis. Um, and I, I saw a couple people said, you know, let's do this in the chat, and I agree. And so I'll just put it up. Does anybody have any objections to sort of the PTA opening up one of these accounts? And uh, I'll work with Mr. DeBonis to figure out um, how to do it. So if anybody has um, questions, George has a thing about can we do a matching? So um, does anybody have any objections, first of all, to the PTA doing this? Okay, good. Uh, well, Mr. DeBonis, I'll reach out to you. We'll figure out, we'll figure this out. We'll reach out and we'll figure this out. Awesome. Thank you so thank much. You. No, thank you. We appreciate it. It's good. It's good for us to help those kids who can't afford to get books on their own. So you can buy more books so that they can take them out and maybe even give them the opportunity to buy a book or two. That's great. That would be great. So happy to do it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. DeBonis. Thank you for for joining us and sharing, sharing, we appreciate it. Um, okay. So, um, um, so if you don't mind unsharing your screen, Mr. DeBonis, then we'll, we just have a, we're a little past eight o'clock, so we'll just try to wrap up real quick. But thank you uh, for um, for this. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, so basically, the last thing we have is our usual. Um, we do our pre-pizza coupons, which we'll do again this month. Uh, I know I need to get out to the people who have won. Uh, Sierra, can you randomly draw some folks and add them to the list? Yes, sorry, one second. My, I lost my tab. Where'd it go? That's okay. <laughs> ah. Too many open. All right. Um, so our first winner is Miss Melissant Kabbala. Okay. Congrats. Is it, is it two or three this time? Two. All right. 
And the second one is Camilla Thrash. Okay, congrats. I, I will reach out to both of you or you can reach out to me. Uh, send me an email at president uh, at gmail.com and we'll, you and all the other folks we need to get out those uh, coupons to. It's a, it's a coupon for good for one week for one free large uh, pizza at Toppers. Uh, you have to go in and pick it up. That's the only problem, if that's a problem. Uh, but it's worth it if you want a free pizza. So thank you. Thank you for the drawing, Sierra. Uh, and then the last thing we have is if anybody has any questions uh, um, about for if Mr. Latham's still around or for Mr. Latham or Mr. DeBonis um, about their presentations or for the PTA in general. Um, so thank you all for joining. We appreciate it. If you have any questions, um, you can always um, email. Um, you can always email us. I'll share um, share the information. Um, like I said, you can always email me at grovetonptapresident at gmail.com uh, or post on the Facebook page. Or please go to our website, uh, which we're trying to uh, put, post more stuff on all the time so people have um, access to, that, to information. Uh, so Sierra's doing a great job of doing that and I pre we appreciate it. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to say them now or reach out to us privately. And thank you all for attending this month's meeting. We, we really appreciate it. And thank you to Mr. Latham and Mr. DeBonis for your presentations. That was great information. Thank you. I see, I see Ken Shuren, you, so, you have your hand up. Do you have a question? Um, I, no, I forgot to put it down. Sorry. That's okay. I kind of thought so because you had had your hand up for a while. So you're either very, you're either very patient or you had your hand up. You definitely, definitely not patient. I <laughs> just joking. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. And uh, Mr. Sharon, if you want to um, give me your, if you, you want in the chat or you can send me an email about, you mentioned about helping out. We'd love to have some help. So um, yep, I'll, sh I'll put in, I'll put my email in the chat right now. Great, thank you, and I'll reach out to you and we can coordinate. Perfect. Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, have a good evening. See y'all later. <laughs>